Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Elenia and this is Soft Skill Atelier where I teach you all the skills you need to bring your fashion ideas to life, from concept to completion. Making clothes usually creates some waste as a side product of cutting fabric into the right shape and usually we don't have any good use for these scraps. So they eventually just land in the bin. I decided to keep all my scraps from previous projects and collect them. Most of these projects were upcycling projects, so I have a ton of cut up t-shirts and garments piling up in my studio. So today I will show you how I made a denim jacket completely made out of these scraps. The technique I'm using is called the pizza technique and you will soon find out why. But first we are going to have a look at all the tools and materials we need for today's session. So let's do it. I used two different sewing threads, a standard one and a thicker thread that will be used for the classic denim top stitching. Some denim buttons. I got mine from Etsy. You can find a never ending variety on there. I decided these are the right ones for me. Loads of pins, fabric and paper scissors, a set square, a fabric marker and this magic material called Solu fleece. It is originally meant for embroidery. The cool thing about it is that it dissolves in water completely and that is exactly what I need for this project. Paper tape, a hole puncher and the hammer for the buttons. Better one with a rubber head and obviously a sewing pattern. I created my own pattern out of a basic jacket pattern. If you like to use my pattern, you can download it from my web shop for a few bucks. It is a PDF file to print out and assemble with paper tape like I did here. I picked size number 42 to make it a bit oversized. I cut everything out on the size I picked. You can also copy your size to a different paper if you want to keep the original pattern as a whole. I started by cutting out the solo fleece. Every pattern piece needs to be cut out twice with a generous seam allowance of 2 cm. As soon as everything was cut out I started the fun stuff and began to fill out the pattern pieces with my scraps. I place them so that there is no gap in between and that it is aesthetically interesting to look at. This process is literally called pizza technique and I couldn't agree more with the name. If the whole pattern is filled evenly with the scraps, I put the second layer of the lining on top and pinned everything together. I needed a lot of pins since all the scraps are loose inside and can easily move around. After I did this process with all the individual pattern pieces, I took them to the sewing machine. For this video, I decided to use my industrial sewing machine because it is just faster to sew on it than on my household sewing machine. Now I sew the scraps together by randomly stitching over the whole surface over and over again until I get a solid piece of new material that is not falling apart anymore. It has endless lines of stitching that hold everything together. After I have repeated this process with all the pattern pieces, I took them home to rinse them in the shower and get rid of all the solo fleece. I hung them up to dry and brought them back to the studio the next day. My self-made pizza fabric has a very interesting organic look to them and I can't wait how the jacket will turn out. Now, finally the jacket sewing process begins. I need to cut out all the pattern pieces. I had to add a few more scraps in some areas to make the pieces fit the pattern because they shrunk a bit during the washing process. As soon as I have cut out all the pieces with seam allowance, I will start to assemble the lower front and the back pieces. I sew them together with a straight stitch and after that I finish the seam allowance edges with an overlock stitch. 
As a overlocker replacement, you can also use a zigzag or a seam that is similar to an overlock seam on a household machine. Next, I ironed the pieces and pressed the seam allowance towards the center of each piece. To get them ready for the decorative denim top stitch, I need to change the thread into a thicker one. The top stitches are in two lines. The first one right on the edge of the seam and the second one a half a centimeter next to it. As soon as the top stitches are on the fabric, the project starts to look denim-y. Next, I take the pocket pieces and iron the seam allowance edges up. I saw the edge of the pocket lid and the opening of the pocket again with a double top stitch. The pockets will be mounted in front on the middle panel right underneath the upper edge and also sewn on with a double top stitch. I place the lids on the upper edge, pin them on and then place the upper front parts on top of it. These three layers I sew together first with a straight stitch and then an overlock seam. And then in the end I also double top stitch the seam. The same I will do with the back part. Now it's time to assemble the front and the back parts and sew them together on the shoulders and on the sides. Also with a straight stitch, an overlock and a double top stitch. Next, I tackle the sleeves. I sew the two seams the same way than all the other seams I have been sewing. The sleeve has two seams and one of them will have a slit. So the side with the slit I will only sew so far. On the slit end I need to cut the seam allowance so I can fold away the opening part. I overlock the side seam and fold the seam allowance to the bigger pattern piece. In the end, all the seams get their double top stitch on the outside. After that, I attach the sleeve to the body part. For that, you need to turn around the body part to the left side. And push the sleeves through the armholes. And make sure the sleeves are turned the right way around. I used loads of pins to make sure that the sleeves are put in evenly. Same story here again. First. Sew the sleeves on with a straight stitch, then overlock the seam allowance and in the end press the seam allowance towards the shoulder and sew a double top stitch around the whole armhole. This is a pretty tricky part, I have to admit, but it looks so much better with the extra stitches, I promise. The center front of the jacket will be closed with buttons. On the pattern there is an extra width included. Fold the seam allowance first and then make a second fold on 4 cm and fix it with a top stitch. I prefer to sew on the outside to make sure that I see what I sew and how the outside will look like. So I make a mark with a tape so I am sure I sew evenly on the right distance to the edge and still hit the folded part. For the collar cuffs and the waistband, I need a counterpart that is not as thick as my created pizza fabric. I had this piece of cotton fabric left and cut out a counterpart for each piece. I start with sewing together the two collar pieces. First I sew the under and then the upper part together, simply with a straight stitch. And then right after that I will top stitch from the outside. On the cotton side, I use a white thread. On the pizza fabric side, I changed to a thicker brown thread and double top stitched again to create some accent. Now that the two collar parts are ready, I can sew them together around the sides and the upper edge. Make sure you fold away the seam allowance from the cotton side before you start sewing. I treated the waistband and the cuffs the exact same way. Before I flipped them around, I had to cut away the access seam allowance in the corners to make sure the corners look crisp and don't look too stuffed. 
After that, I give all the pieces a good press and fold up the cotton side seam allowance all the way through, attaching the pieces to the jacket. The most important thing is that you make sure that the collar sits right in the middle of the neckline. I like to help myself by following the garments to find out where the exact middle of the piece is. First I only attach the pizza fabric to the inside of the neckline, again with a ton of pins. And I sew that on only with a straight stitch. Sewing on the cuffs and the waistband is done by the same process, except this time the pizza fabric will be attached to the outside part and the cotton part will be the inside. I cut away all the access seam allowance and close the cuffs, the collar and the waistband with the top stitch, again using enough pins. The final task of this project is sewing on the buttonholes and attaching the buttons. I used a distance of 9 cm between the buttonholes and I also made holes in the cuffs and the pocket lids. The buttons have a diameter of 1.5 cm and that is how big the buttonhole needs to be. I marked the length with a fabric marker and sew in the buttonholes with a household sewing machine. I carefully cut open the holes and make sure the button fits through. Last but not least, I added all the buttons to the other side of the front opening by pre-punching the holes and then connect the back and front part of the button with a hammer. And here I go. This is my final jacket. I hope you like it. To mix it up a bit and to make a proper use of all my scraps I collected. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you liked it and if you did so, please like, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. I see you next time. Bye!